listen, you want to make a couple million dollars making a Tarzan movie? Sure, sure, sure. I get it. But is there really an appetite for that kind of media right now? And by media, I'm talking about that's really racially charged. I mean, if you really think about it, Tarzan is very racially charged. It's racially charged off the top because the backdrop is Africa. And then you've got, and as I remember as the story goes, Tarzan was like highborn, okay, whatever the hell that means. Uh, like he's like, He's he's got the the blood of a, of European aristocrats or something like that coursing through his veins, okay? And then something happens in the jungle and somehow Harambe and friends become his surrogate. That he gets adopted. <laughs> he gets adopted. And he just grows up with all these animal skills or something like that. I don't know. But if you think about it, it's very racially charged. I mean, the backdrop is Africa, and then you've got this European aristocrat basically. They're swinging in on vimes. He's beating up the, the 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 Africans. Bring me your toughest warrior. Me Tarzan defeat, right? He vanquishes the toughest African warriors. The animals trust him more than the Africans. I mean, it's just, how do you not see that? Uh, Ed writes, Tariq Nasheed explained it best in Hidden Colors. I was reading your chat. What happened to it? I'm not sure. I was reading something from Ed, and then it just disappeared. So he must have uh, deleted it. Uh, Krista writes, it's the same way in Madisonville. I live in an apartment, and the next street over has $250,000 houses on it. Right. You get a lot of that. You get a lot of that. When you got, you got one street that's a row of beautiful homes, and then the next street over is a row of apartments. And nothing negative about folks in apartments. I mean, I've lived in apartments. You know, I grew up in apartments the whole nine yards. Uh, got no problem with it. Would I would live in an apartment in the future. I got a problem with it. But there's a difference between people that live in apartments and people who live in homes. And typically is, what I've seen, is that people that live in homes care more about the outdoor spaces. If the trash falls over, psh, let me get this trash real quick. Because that's their property. They want it to look good. Okay? It's a reflection of them. Uh, people in apartments is like, that ain't my trash. I wish this bee come out here and get her trash. Okay, and that's just, that's cool and all. But for the folks in the neighborhood, it's not so good. Tracy writes, uh, when I bring my friends here and drive them through the neighborhoods, they cannot believe how segregated the city is. Like draw, Like lines drawn in the sand. You're right. That's the other thing. The city is very racially segmented. It is. And... As you're driving from neighborhood to neighborhood, right? And just keep in mind what I've already shared with you. You can kind of feel it. You can kind of feel it. And again, maybe it's a Cincinnati thing because I've lived here. And I'm wondering for folks listening around the country, are, is the area where you live at similar to that? Uh, or is this a thing that's unique to Cincinnati? It's, I'm telling you, it is, the, it is the most amazing thing. Like there are spots in Avondale Right. And I'm thinking of one in particular. OK, it's like a row of apartments and the police have been called there for some very high profile incidents several times over the last few years. OK. And this place has been shown on the news. OK. All right. So you can drive from the intersection where that I'm speaking of, go straight up the hill, literally straight up the hill to Clifton. And you've got one of the most uh, sought after magnet schools, public schools in the entire city. And it's that close to all kinds of stuff that gets reported on local news. And you could take that same spot in Avondale. And again, shout out to Avondale. They're doing great work. Avondale's on a come up. They got a lot of people that care about that community. But, you know, I keep it real with you about all things. So keeping that spot in mind, like I told you, has been highly publicized in Avondale. And again, Avondale's a suburb of Cincinnati. You can drive two or three minutes to another section of Avondale they call North Avondale. And you might expect to see, like, I don't know, the head of a company or the, the head of one of, these, uh, uh, one of these big corporations living there. That's just how this city is. And it's very segregated. You can almost tell. Uh, Ed writes, Tariq Nasheed explained it best in Hill and Colors. 
on how the LGBTQ community got their issues across. It took a lot of dollars. Okay. Uh, Miller writes, a dead cat sat in front of an apartment next to me and no one cared. I had to move it onto the street so the city would get it. See, that's what I'm talking about, Mila. And good morning to you. Uh, nothing about people in apartments. I'm just saying, some of them folks in some of these apartments, they don't give a damn. They don't give a damn. They'll let a body sit out there. A human cadaver. It doesn't make a difference. It's like, ah, I don't I don't own this property. Tell the landlord, right? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Did anyone get a chance to view the video of the two brothers who are basically working? That's what they were doing. They were scoping out and comparing prices of other properties in a neighborhood in which they own a property. Police officer pulls them over and basically says, you don't look familiar to me, boy. Basically, who are you, boy? And they they try to politely this, you know, let this guy know that they own a piece of property, a building, a, a home in that neighborhood and what they were doing. So dude decides to follow them back to the house and I watched the entire video twice. I mean, they're cracking up. They're like, oh, we got us one now. World star moment. They knew they had a, a Gilligan uh, on tape. And so they go right back to this home. Beautiful home, by the way. Nice big lawn of you and those kind of of things. And they go inside and open the door. The police officer goes up to the door and realizes he made a terrible mistake. And they're like, come on, man, you got $300,000. You can buy this from us. You know, you know, they're giving him the business, right? They're having some fun with him, and rightly so. Dude turns right around and walks away. Just sit right back and you'll hear it. They'll hear the tale of a sucker MC Gilligan ass police officer who should be out there trying to apprehend criminals, right? Go catch some terrorists or something out there, right? Instead, you're harassing black men in nice cars in nice neighborhoods. Way to go, police officer. Way to go. Is that what they taught you at the academy? Black man, nice car, nice neighborhood. He must be up to something. I mean, is that ever going to get old? Is that ever going to get old? But it was hilarious. So they took him right. They're bragging the whole way. And I'm not sure what these brothers are doing, but it's working for them. Whatever they're doing is working for them because they've got homes. And I mean, it's just. It's <laughs> and the officer realizes, like, hey, I made a mistake here. Yeah, officer, you made a mistake. You really did. And essentially, what you have, like the way James put it, he says, you got these two entrepreneurs uh james rice great video of the two young entrepreneurs and the most telling moment was when the bigger guy said let's park up front because we don't want anything to happen if we pull in the back that was interesting and then his brother his partner's like well let me catch all of this on video and the officer walks through their grass which it is what it is i think one of them makes a, a comment about it like man you're gonna walk through the grass in a three hundred thousand dollar home and apparently they'd already got an offer on it, but it wasn't enough. So these are two brothers that are out here trying to do something. I mean, I'm hoping, I'm assuming this through legal means. Who knows? That's their business. And the officer just straight up, sir, he just straight up stereotypes them, straight up. Uh, Karamir writes, it's amazing how neighborhoods are racist or racially divided in Cincinnati. But here in Houston, you'll have mansions in low-income areas. Really? Mansions in low-income areas, like on another street, like you can go like two blocks away from it because that's how Cincinnati is in some neighborhoods. Now, then you can get into some neighborhoods where you got you got neighborhoods where there's a really, really heavy concentration of poor people or the working poor or however you want to describe them. And then you got neighborhoods where you got a very, very high concentration of people who seem to be doing well, okay, who seem to be doing very, very well. And let's see what else here. Uh, Someone on Twitter is asking me if I believe that there is going to be any movement after what the Democrats displayed yesterday. Kind of reading as if he's got a problem with the Democrats, and that's all right. Uh, Do I believe there's going to be? No, I do not. 
I do not. I don't believe that the Democrats have the numbers to really make anything happen inside of Congress at this point. Maybe they will. We'll find out. And I don't think that really that the public has a real appetite to really get out there and do anything. People feel like their hands are tied. There's not much that they can do. And unless the Republicans decide that they want to get on board, in fact, already some of them have, but we need need more Republicans to get on board with it, then nothing's really going to happen. Nothing's really going to happen. And that's because the gun lobby is just too powerful. You know, it's just too powerful. The NRA, too powerful. The gun manufacturers, very, very powerful. And then secondly, when people are afraid, they want to feel as if they can take the fear away. And part of the, the way they take the fear away is they get strapped up themselves. And by getting strapped up and concealing and carrying and having weapons in their homes and in their cars, they feel as if they're taking back, they're, they're pushing the fear away. They're pushing the fear away. And when people are fearful, they are more likely to do anything. They become much much more pliable. They want it to go away. They want it to stop. They want to feel safe again. And it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's, it's a cycle. People are There's a mass shooting. It makes people afraid. People go buy more guns. More guns are out there. More likely for somebody to get a gun. More likely for a psycho sickle to commit a mass shooting. He commits a mass shooting. People are afraid. People get guns. It's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. I'll tell you one thing. There's one debate as it relates to guns when it comes to the black community. The debate is is you do these gun buybacks, right? Every time there's a shooting in the black community, people want to disarm the black community. Oh, do gun buybacks, and we'll give you $50 gift certificate to this place or a $100 gift certificate to your favorite spot if you just turn in a gun. But there's one school of thought that feels like, wait a minute, why, why is it that we only do and primarily focus on the gun buybacks in black neighborhoods? And I'm just wondering if anybody picks up on that. You can give me your thoughts on that. Nathan Ivy with you. Currently 8.16 a.m. in the Queen City. <laughs> and I'll tell you what we'll do. <laughs> That's Junior. Uh, currently 8.17 a.m. in the Queen City. I'm sorry. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that I was going to share something with you. I am a man of my word. I told you that the city passed a budget, very little controversy, and more money was allocated for public safety and some neighborhood projects. Among other things, there's going to be $100,000 included in the budget for the Bury District Trail. I'm not sure what the Bury District Trail is. Is that like a trail where you can go from one like brewer Bury from to another? Okay. You know, walking around outside and drinking is a big thing in Cincinnati. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure if it's big in other places, but it's big here. So I guess I get it. $185,000 additionally to repair some of the city's aging hillside steps. $90,000 for Keep Cincinnati Beautiful's Future Blossoms program, uh, whatever that is. $132,000 for the Ensemble Theater. $250,000 $250,000 for a new violence prevention program, $110,000 for two school nurses, and $32,500 for the African American Chamber of Commerce. That budget, or this budget, is going to take effect on July 1st. I mean, there's some other details as well, uh, but what do you think? Well, some say that the priority should be on the neighborhoods. Uh, do you believe that? just with the short list that I've gave you that the neighborhood concerns and issues are being properly addressed. I believe there's more money as well that was put away for like Avondale and some of the things that have been going over with the town center, which is desperately needed. I mean, the entire Reading road corridor, that entire, I mean, Reading road. I mean, really from the Southern part until you get, how far do we need to go up to Reading Road? I mean, we at least need to go from the beginning of Reading Road through Avondale, okay? That's just off the top, all the way through through Avondale. What else? I mean, once you get to Avondale, what do you got over there? You got the, like, the armory over there, and you got a bunch of shots. But, yeah, all the way through Avondale needs to be developed, all of it, redeveloped, should I say, every bit of it. 
And if it starts with the the Avondale Town Center, hey, I'm down with that too. I'm so be it. So be it. Let's 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 do it. And think about the job. 